lightreading.com. We got Mike Dano with a story here. T-Mobile, our 5G network is open for wholesale business. I don't know about that, but let's see. Let's see what this is about. And then we're going to be taking a look at, a, I guess, an accelerator program for T-Mobile. So we'll kind of a T-Mobile video today. All right, after the big 5G event where T-Mobile had their executives there answering questions, discussing the future of what the company will be doing, one of the themes was, quote, let's get people on the network. This according to T-Mobile's Dan Tagissen. I'm not sure about the pronunciation, sorry. SVP and general manager of the operator's wholesale and business platform. He says that he's in charge of dealing with the companies like Altice, Google Fi, and others that sell access of the T-Mobile network to those brands. And this is probably big because a lot of people know how big the MVNO market is. Companies like Comcast and Charter are adding a couple million customers a year. And T-Mobile is not really that much involved. They now have a couple of things in place, again, with Altis and Google Fi. But, you know, they don't seem interested in offering mobile services to Comcast and Charter, which is kind of strange because Verizon's got those deals and they're getting growth. Wouldn't you want to take part in that? Au contraire, mon frere, T-Mobile says we're not in the business of selling our network to competitors that are growing. So they're not going to facilitate their growth (laughs) in order to not facilitate their own. Kind of like, you know, I guess cutting off your nose to spite your your face. Uh, So T-Mobile does want to do wholesale. They do want to sell to companies. They just don't want to sell it to people that can actually compete with them. This would explain why they would be willing to sell to Google Fi and Altice. And it probably also explains why they're not really looking to sell to other growing companies and why they're trying to bury Dish. Uh, They don't want to see Dish take off, that's for sure. And this goes for fixed wireless access. This goes for mobility. I think this goes to show you, it's it's like, yeah, yeah, we really want to grow, and we really want to do this, but we don't want to do it with these people. So you'd rather not grow as long as the other companies don't grow, because you don't want to see them grow. (laughs) So a little bit of wolf tickets here. I, I don't know. I'm not really sure why they felt compelled to say we're here, we're open for wholesale business, but you don't want the business of the fastest growing, biggest companies who would get people on your network for whatever reason. Anyways, next, T-Mobile Accelerator Program Fuels AR Initiative. Okay, so what's this about here? T-Mobile has launched an augmented reality initiative involving the T-Mobile Accelerator Program, which is going to work with developer flat platforms like Snapdragon Spaces XR. And they're going to be working with startups and developers and entrepreneurs on creating immersive experiences in AR smart glasses. Okay, so AR VR is kind of like the next big frontier. And, you know, think about things like Meta and Facebook and whatever these metaverse platforms are going to be. Uh, Consumer and business segments where they can have virtual business meetings and they can have virtual experiences and augmented reality experiences, whether it's work, play, education. It's good that T-Mobile wants to be involved. So what they're doing is they're kind of fostering like a, I don't know what you would call it, like a farm of sorts, right? They're going to try to grow these collaborative opportunities where they can connect with operators and service providers, policymakers, and then also the companies that are going to build all these experiences. Here are some of the new Accelerator participants, a company called Beam, and they're going to enable live and on-demand communication using humans and AR. Crikey, which is an AR gaming and social media app. Mawari is cloud rendering and streaming technology for AR. Then we have Mox Games, advanced and immersive AR gaming and entertainment. Pluto, which offers shared presence communication in AR and VR. And then Victory XR, which is AR and VR tech for education. In a lot of cases, I think it's good to be first. Be in the conversation at the early onset. And then you can probably get some opportunities, whether it's just a few or things really take off for you. You have to be there. You guys got to keep in mind when it came to 4G LTE, like T-Mobile was an absolute afterthought. They didn't have the network. They didn't have the mind share. They didn't have the market share. They didn't have a chance. AT&T and Verizon took all of that. Specifically, I think more so Verizon. Now is their opportunity by being in the catbird seat with 5G 
they can kind of get involved in here, whether it's wearables or it's education or it's business or it's enterprise. They have to be there and they got to be there in the very beginning. So this is really encouraging to see. I've speculated that the only way for T-Mobile to change their future is to become more like the big carriers like Verizon and this indication that they are going to be there in the conversation. So I'm glad. And like I said, it's like a farm system. Uh, Let the use cases kind of create themselves. Just make sure you're there in the conversation as being the network as a service provider. And with this, uh, you guys can comment on both of these stories. Again, the wholesale business is a head scratcher. You say you want to be there. You want to be in, you know, taking part in wholesale business, but you're not really going to be competing against Verizon for those two big accounts. That would be huge if they can get one of those or both of those. And T-Mobile, you know, they 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 say they got the owner's economics and the synergies. I have no idea why they don't want to do this. The only thing I think about is maybe because they want to essentially compete in home internet with fixed wireless access. They don't want to feel like they could facilitate customers that they would lose over to Comcast and Spectrum for their home services. That's all I could think of. I got nothing else. Sound off in the comment section below. You are the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Please do like, share, and subscribe to help out the channel. Turn on the notifications bell so you never miss an upload. Links for my Twitter and email down below in the description box, as well as my Patreon page. Support us there and get early access to content and exclusives not found anywhere else. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Peace.